Your e-mountain bike is gonna go further and faster with a little bit of maintenance, but maintenance doesn't necessarily mean a load of fancy tools to do those jobs. In fact, a lot of those jobs can be done with just one of these, a simple multi-tool. So today, I'll be showing you a mini service you can do using just your multi-tool. So this is a basic multi-tool. This is the Park Tool IB3 and it comes in at around 25 pounds and it has loads of features on there. You've got Allen keys ranging from 1.5 mil all the way up to eight mil. We've got a straight blade screwdriver on there, a chain tool, T25 Torx key, tire levers, spoke wrenches, pretty much loaded for every eventuality you might have at the workshop or even on the side of the trail. Now multi-tools are coming in at a load of different price points and this is mainly due to the, the tools that they have on there and the quality of the tools. You can get some from pound shops which might last, last one or two jobs but they probably will round off or they'll rattle loose and bits will fall off so just try and buy the best one you can at a time. And this is pretty lightweight, it weighs about six ounces so that being in your backpack isn't even going to be noticed at all. But how capable is this tool when it comes to servicing an any mountain bike? That's what I want to find out. So let's go have a look. Now something you should be doing on your e-mountain bike to make sure you're not missing out on any areas is the M check. Now if you don't know what this is, this is a capital M on your bike. So basically starting at the back wheel, you start there, and all the drivetrain, derailleur, then you go up to the seat and seat post, down to the crank area, then up to the headset and finish on the front wheel. That way you're gonna make sure you're not gonna leave any of those vital components out. So as I mentioned, we're gonna start with the M check. So starting at the back wheel, things you wanna check is gonna be the Allen key that mounts your derailleur to the hanger on the frame. And whilst you're there, maybe check the hanger as well, because that is mounted internally to the frame. Just make sure that is nice and tight. Then your jockey wheel bolts, just make sure they're nice and tight and they're pretty clean as well. So just run around that with a multi-tool. Whilst you're at the back end, check that the rear wheel axle is nice and tight. Then I like to take a look at the brakes to make sure they're working efficiently. If they're rubbing, uh, and you, when you spin the wheel, there's any noise from them, they just need recentering, and that's pretty easy to do. You just hold the rear brake on, or the front brake, whichever one is rubbing, hold it on, and then do the bolt on the caliper and let it move. Then it's gonna find its central point, and while still holding the brake lever on, you retension the bolts down, and that should see that caliper sat in a neutral position. Now something I notice on e-bikes quite a lot is these bolts coming undone on the rotor, the T25 rotor bolts. An easy way to check for this is holding the back brake on whilst rocking the bike back and forward. You can actually feel the rotor moving within the frame. So just go around and tension these up just to make sure that they're nice and tight. If they persistently come undone, I just put a bit of blue thread lock on there and it should stop them coming undone all of the time. Then I'm just gonna give my wheel a quick spin just to make sure it's spinning nice and easy. If there's any brake noise at all coming from the caliper, then these are the two bolts you need to be undoing. Just undo them, and as I mentioned, hold the lever down whilst you undo them, and keep it held down whilst you do the bolts back up. That way the caliper is gonna be centralized and you should have no brake rub after that. Then I'm gonna be working my way up to the saddle and just checking the saddle bolts underneath and nice and tensioned. Usually if you're getting a creak from your bike, particularly when you're in the saddle, it's gonna be coming from underneath the seat. Now these bolts, just tension them up to the manufacturer's specifications and just check that the seat hasn't moved in the rails. Usually if it's slipped, you'll have paint chipped off the fore or the aft of the rail, meaning that the saddle has actually moved from position. And whilst you're there, I'll just check your seat post clamp as well, just make sure that's nipped up nice and tight. Then we're gonna move down to the bottom bracket area. So as I work my way down from the seat post, I'm gonna be checking my shock linkage bolts are all nice and tight too. Just make sure they're set to the manufacturer's uh, specifications and just check that shock shaft as well. Just make sure there isn't too much leakage or anything, you know, too much oil on there. If there is, it could be that the uh, shock seal needs replacing. Now we're gonna move down to the motor and the crank as well. Now typical, uh, fenders on here is going to be your crank bolts just make sure they're tensioned up nice and tight as well as well as the motor mounts and check your pedals too it doesn't hurt to actually remove and re-grease these pedals after a bit of time a lot of people do pedals up way too tight you need to do them up just to nip them up um, you know it shouldn't be a constant battle trying to undo your pedals so just make sure they're nice and greased up because when it comes to removing them it's going to make it a lot lot easier when it comes to your pedals, you might find that these are pretty stiff to undo, so just using a small uh, multi-tool might not suffice to actually undoing them. 
Also, just be aware that the left-hand pedal is a left-hand thread and the right-hand pedal is threaded as per usual. But if you can't undo them with your multi-tool, you get a long-handled 8mm Allen key on there, or 6mm, and it should undo those pedals with ease. Right, so I'm happy with the crank, so I'm gonna move up to the headset area. Now, classic headset knocking is something that a lot of riders will have when they first get their bikes, particularly when that headset beds in. So a great way of trying this is actually holding the front brake and rocking the bike back and forward and placing your fingers around the upper of the headset and you should feel any movement within there. And also, just while you're here, check your stem bolts are nice and tight and cranked up to the manufacturer's specifications. And things like your control unit and your brake levers, they're all in the right places. Again, don't over tighten these because if you crash, then you actually want them to move. If they're too tight, then they're not gonna move, they're just gonna snap. So it's worth just running around these, and just looking for any you know, damage on cables or hoses as well, whilst you're at that front end. So if you do notice any movement in your headset, you just need to undo these two bolts on the side of the stem, then just retension the headset top cap bolt. Uh, don't go crazy on that, it's just simply to preload the bearings, then you retension the bolts on the side of the stem, and that should remove any play from your headset. So if the gears aren't quite as crisp as they once were on your e-mountain bike, the shifting isn't quite bang on, then you can adjust this barrel adjuster here. It's just a simple case of increasing or decreasing that cable tension. If you find you can't upshift into the easier gears, then you're probably going to need to tension the cable, so wind the barrel adjuster out. But if you can't downshift, then you need to wind the uh, barrel adjuster in. There's pretty much no adjustment at the rear uh, mech aside from the stop screws. And unless you've had, you've had a, a hit to the derailleur, then you shouldn't need to be adjusting these. It's purely going to be down to your cable tension. So then once I'm happy with the front end of the bike, I'm going to move down to the forks, just do a quick inspection of the seals and make sure there's no nasty marks on these. Then moving down to the front wheel axle, just make sure again, that is nice and tight. And you're checking these rotor bolts. If they are loose, again, just tighten them up with your multi-tool or maybe even add some Loctite to them. Similar thing with the front brake, just check that that's not rubbing. If it is, it's the same as the rear one. Just undo the two bolts that are holding the caliper on and re-centralize that caliper and it should see it running free. Then it's a case of just doing a bolt check the whole way over the bike. Anything that you can put an Allen key into, just make sure that it's nice and tight. Then inspect the tires just for any damage, spin the wheels to make sure they're running nice and true. And lastly, just finish off with a nice degrease and lube of your drivetrain and then you should be ready to go. Then once you've done your bolt check all over the multi-tool, it's time to take a look at the creek test. Now I like to grab components on my bike like my saddle and move it up and down to see if there's any noise coming from it. If there is a creaking coming from it, I know that I've got to strip, degrease and regrease all the components in there and hopefully eradicate that creak. And when it comes to creak, uh, creaking on your e-bike, an easy way to do it is by finding out whether it's coming from when you're pedaling, does it come from when you're freewheeling, does it come when you're sat in the saddle or out the saddle? Or does it come in when you pull on your handlebars? Doing each of those should be an easy way to eradicate that annoying creak because they can simply drive you mad and trying to locate them can take months sometimes. So there we are, a quick service of your e-mountain bike using just a multi-tool. It doesn't have to cost a lot, it's just gonna take a little bit of your time but that time is well spent if it means your e-mountain bike is gonna run sweet. But let us know down in the comments box below about what you spend your time fixing on your e-mountain bike the most. Give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to EMBN and make sure you find and give us a follow on social media too. Cheers.